All right, today we're going to talk about the French and Indian War. It's quite a significant act in American history. It set up a lot of things uh, to include the American Revolution. It was really the, and starting that uh, big event. So that'll be our next block of instructions here. So let's get right into it. So what was this French and English thing? Well, if you look out here in the middle, this was all this green was French territory. The British is yellow. The British are wanting to go west. The French are wanting to come south. And they meet right in here, and you can see where that causes problems. Because they're both, uh, but there were other problems in the other colonies as well. Uh, Africa, England, I mean, uh, India for about six years. So it was called the Seven Years' War in Europe. It was called the French and Indian War here. So this was really the product of a war between the French and the English over colonial territory and wealth. I mentioned to you about the territory, really the Ohio River Valley is what we're talking about, and I'll show you that in a moment, and wealth. They were both making a lot of money trading furs out in that territory uh, with the Native Americans. And it was really a rivalry between the British and French colonists. The French had citizens out there, the British had citizens out there, and they were competing against each other and trying to make more money and get rid of the other one. So as mentioned, this was between England and France. They were trading furs. The Native Americans were giving them furs. They were giving the Native Americans other things, cooking utensils, wagons, horses, uh, weapons to, to kill more animals, to get more furs. And this is all in the Ohio area. Uh, each tried to keep the other one out of that area. In the 1750s, French soldiers captured several English trading posts. Uh, a lot of little small villages and families were just killed by either Native Americans or the British or the French. Uh, the British built Fort Duquesne, which is in now in downtown Pittsburgh. There's still a monument there uh, to defend their territory from English incursions. An incursion is um, the English entering that area. So these are the causes. This is our First was a dispute over land. We talked about it a moment ago. This is the Ohio River here. Uh, where the Monongahela and the Ohio and the Allegheny meet uh, at Fort Duquesne where the French set it up. They both claimed it. The British thought that their colonies went from the coast all the way to the other coast wherever that was. They didn't know where it was yet, but they knew there was a coast over there somewhere. The French were setting up trading posts. You can see a lot of them out in here. And they both felt they had a right to be in there. So because of all these conflicts, Ben Franklin, you may remember him, he's on the $100 bill, he was with the Declaration of uh, Independence, he was with the convention to set up the uh, Bill of Rights, he was an inventor. Well, he called for a meeting called the Albany Conference in Albany, New York, and they went up and they all met and tried to get, come up with ways to, to unite the Native Americans who were with the British and the colonists. Now remember, the, the, the French treated the Native, the Native Americans very well. The British did not treat them so well. So they were trying to find out ways to do that and, and unite. This was really important because this was the first meeting of the colonies. Seven of the 13 went. And this is where Ben Franklin and some others got the idea that they need to start working together as opposed to be independent of each other, which they largely were. They really didn't care about what the other one was doing. But because of new issues with the with the French and their allied Indians uh, and their colonial partners, then that was a problem. And he wanted all the colonies to work together. Ben Franklin developed this little uh, chopped up snake uh, representing all the colonies here, the New England colonies, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. So you've got all these, and he's basically saying join together or die. If you all come together, then you're a powerful snake. If not, you're just a chopped up snake and you'll be eaten by the birds. You've got to unite to be strong. So some key people here. We're going to look at all these in just a moment. So let's get right into it. It's just five of them. General William Pitt. He was the Prime Minister of England. General Braddock, who was a military commander here. He expected a quick victory over the unworthy French and Indians. But he wanted to use traditional military tactics. Uh, William Johnson. He was a uh, British officer. He persuaded the Mohawk Indians to ally with the, the British. Um, other Indians fought with the uh, French. George Washington, you're familiar with him, president of the country, first president, and the commander of the, the colonial army during the uh, American Revolution. He had a small incursion into Fort Duquesne, 
killed several French people, uh, then had to surrender to the French. He was set free. He later worked with Braddock to attack Fort Duquesne again. But he learned a lot of valuable lessons about leadership and warfare. And finally, General Amherst, he led a lot of British expeditions into Canada, won a lot of victories up there, but he hated the colonists. He finally won. He was later made governor, I believe, of Virginia or Massachusetts and actually led as a governor back from England because he just didn't like it here in America. So William Pitt, he was the prime minister, as I mentioned. Uh, they actually renamed, when the British finally retook Fort Duquesne, they named it Fort Pitt in honor of the prime minister, and later it became Pittsburgh, uh, the town of Pitt. But his big thing was he was responsible for financing the British war effort because it costs money to ship soldiers over here, pay them, bring supplies, bring wagons. And he came up with a plan to cut the French off from their supply line by attacking the St. Lawrence River. The French eventually had to give up. General Braddock came over. One, he was a general. He was told to go and get rid of Fort Duquesne from the French. He took 1,400 British soldiers, marched out there. He was going to use traditional... Military tactics, he didn't want to listen to General or Colonel Washington and the Colonials. Uh, he wound up getting attacked, big big battle out there. A lot of his officers and soldiers, 900 of the 1,400, were either killed or wounded. Braddock got killed. He's still buried out there. It's a big monument to him. And uh, Washington organized a retreat and uh, reorganized. He was recognized for saving the Army. William Johnson. It's quite a unique character here. He could, as mentioned, he convinced the Mohawks to fight with the British. He commanded the colonial militia. Even though he was a British citizen, he was born in England. He came here to, to, to help. He captured Fort Niagara, won several of the battles. But he really worked with the Indians. He learned their language. He dressed in their clothes. He took a, a Mohawk name. He, after the war, he worked to protect their land. He even married an Indian woman. He had an Indian wife and he had a British wife. And just for the heck of it, he appears in Assassin's Creed 3 and Rogue video and uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue video games. If you ever look at those, uh, Colonel George Washington. Again, he was a member of the Virginia military commander. He was sent out in 1754. He attacked some French forces and uh, killed several of them. Returned, set up what's called Fort Necessity. A little British outpost out there. He was surrounded by the French, forced to surrender. Came back to Virginia. He was then recruited by General Braddock to go back on the Fort, mission, the Fort Duquesne mission. And we just talked about what happened on that failed mission, not with General Braddock. But again, he gained lots of valuable military and leadership experience that would serve him in the American War for Independence. And finally, General Jim, Jeffrey Amherst, uh, he opened up the St. Lawrence River. He stopped uh, the British fleet up there. He uh, attacked and won at Quebec. He won several battles in Lake George and Lake Champlain. He, and as a reward, he was appointed the, the Governor General of North America. And uh, But he just did not like the colonists. So it all came down to this. It finally ended. Uh, they fought, the British finally captured Fort Duquesne, and the final blow was when the British won at Quebec, and the French were defeated. They could no longer get supplies in, so they had to surrender. You, this is just a quick map of all the different battles. You studied on your own, some of the different uh, forts that were out there. The blue ones are uh, the French victories, and the red ones are the British victories. You see how they come later. Quebec in 59, Montreal in 60. So it was all over. The British and the French met in Paris in 1763, signed an agreement where France lost all control over all of Canada and all land east of the Mississippi River. So they still kept some west of, Louisiana, of the Mississippi. That was called Louisiana, and down all the way down to um, Louisiana that we call today New Orleans. Uh, the United States would later buy that in the early 1800s. But so that was when the 50 years later, 40, about another 40 years later, they would buy that. Um, Britain also got Florida from Spain. Spain was France's ally, and they lost. So sorry, Felicia, but uh, 
you go on the winning side, you're going to lose something. So that's how Florida became a colony and later a state. But this war was very costly to Britain. It caused a huge war debt. I think it was estimated about 140 million pounds, which you know, 250 years ago, that was a lot of money. Uh, that was billions of dollars today. But it created bad relations with the colonists. They didn't see themselves as being protected. They were taxed a lot after the war. They felt they were being constrained by Britain after having all their independence over here. So this, this really caused a lot of problems later on. Even though Britain got a lot of land out of it, it caused problems with the colonists that are really going to cost them. So you can kind of see the boundaries. Here are the British colonies. Here's areas in dispute. And this is all Mississippi River here. And this was all French territory here, even with Canada. Well, I'm sorry, this is all the uh, Hudson Bay Company. But after 1763, you see France. France is nowhere. France is in Haiti. I was a large influence there, and they still speak a version of French down there now. But all of this is now British territory. And this is all Louisiana. Uh, which the United, a lot of this the United States will buy in about 50 years. So after the war was over, the Ottawa Native Americans uh, who were up in the Michigan area, they were angry that the uh, the French were defeated. They were very upset. This guy named Pontiac, he had been trading peacefully, peacefully with the French, but he was very mad and he didn't want to lose, so he kept attacking the British in the Mississippi River Valley. He was not happy. So because of that, the British, the, uh, the British King George, he wanted to prevent more fighting. He was tired of it. It was very expensive. Uh, he didn't want to be fighting with the Indians anymore. So he just kind of said, hey, guys, love you, but we're going to draw this line. And here's this red line, this line between the red and the pink right here. It's called the Proclamation Line of 1763. And it basically told the colonists, hey, look, Indians are over here, bad area. You stay here. You cannot go forward to this Appalachian Mountains. Now, they built forts out there. They would prevent settlers from going out. Some settlers tried to go out and, and uh, settle out there. Some of them were caught. Some of them were killed. Some of them were just sent back. Some of them had their possessions burned by the British Army before they crossed. Uh, but the colonists were angered by this. They wanted to expand. They wanted to grow. They wanted to go out here and get land that they were promised for coming over that they could get. Now they can't get it. So the colonists really thought this was really controlling. This is where tensions really began to rise between England and the colonies. Uh, because of all that expense, uh, William Pitt said, look, y'all got to pay for it. This was to protect you, so we're going to tax you. They put taxes on legal documents, marriage license, bill of sale, birth certificates, anything that was a legal document people had to have, they had to pay a tax on it. It was called the Stamp Act. You would pay a dollar, get whatever the tax was, and put your stamp on your document to show it was legal. They also taxed tea and sugar to pay for the cost of the war. These didn't work. Uh, we'll talk more about that, but the people are getting upset that they're having to do this. Uh, taxes were also needed to pay for the British troops that were stationed throughout the colonies to maintain the proclamation line, to maintain any protection against the French or Spanish that might want to come by, to protect against any Indian incursions. Colonists didn't like having all these British troops around. British troops didn't like being there. Uh, and the colonists didn't like the restrictions on expansion by the proclamation of 1763. We've already mentioned that. So in summary, this was part of a bigger worldwide seven, seven years war between Britain and France. Uh, it resulted in new territory for Britain and the colonies, both Florida, land to the Mississippi, and Canada. That's a lot of land. However, it required more protection of the military in the colonies, which the colonials didn't like. The war debt was significant, and all this angered the colonies because of taxes, the military protection, and all the restrictions that were placed on them for an expansion that were basically promised to them earlier and now pulled out from under them. So all these problems are going to raise their head later, and the colonies are going to start getting mad at the king and asking for uh, more rights and more abilities and uh, they won't get it and they'll eventually go to war with England in the uh, for their own independence. So with that we're going to leave it there and we'll pick it back up when we get into the American independence movement.